Okay, guys, uh, here we're on to the next step. We're checking the main bearing clearances, and I kind of got ahead of myself. Uh, no surprise, I'm just cranking along down here on this thing. <clears throat> so I wanted to catch you back up with where we're at right now. So what we've done is we've started the process of plasti gauging the main berry journals. So we will show you exactly what that looks like when we do the rods, and I'll make sure that I don't forget that. Um, so what the process is, <clears throat> you're going to first start off, um, you're going to start off by making sure that everything is clean. So we took brake cleaner, and we wore gloves because you don't want to get the salt from your hands on these guys. And you don't want to touch the face of the bearings, bearing surfaces. So we went ahead, we cleaned everything thoroughly. We stood the crank up on end and we washed it down from top to bottom, making sure that there was no crap. It was, you'd be surprised. It looked perfectly clean. These main bearing caps looked clean. But once you start washing them down, you'll see a lot of debris, fine debris, debris that you don't want in your bearings kicking around. There's plenty of that other stuff that's going to happen just on its own. We don't need to be sloppy and introduce it by human error. Um, so what we did is we cleaned everything up. Um, I got my friend John who is, this is his motor. It's going to be going in a truck that he's selling to one of his good friends. And so John and I grabbed the crank. We made sure that it was clean. We set in the lower bearings. As you can see, there is a key, okay? So that fits in. They only fit in one way. Um, and you very carefully, you set them in place and then you'll just push down, usually on the side with the key and it'll slide into place. Or you can set the key in place and push down on this side of the bearing till they're flush. Um, then you repeat the process with your top cap. So once we had everything cleaned up, the journals were clean, main bearings were all installed on both upper and lower. What we then did is we went through and we cut some plastic gauge. Now, if you're not familiar with plastic gauge, this is a little section. This is about how much I had left over of doing all of the main bearings. The spec for this is less than four thousandths. So you can see there, um, it's got six, five, four, three, two. And what happens is, if you see in there, you'll see a little red. It looks like red fishing line. Let me see if I can get that come back in focus. There we go. Looks like red fishing line, and it crushes to a specific thickness when force is applied on it. So it'll tell you with pretty good certainty what the clearances are in your main mains, rods, anything that you're clearancing like this. So this is how much I had left over. Um, the pack that it came from looked something like this. This is an older pack we had kicking around. The, um, that is an SPGR-1. I'll try to go ahead and link that in the comments below. So if you need some coming, you can go ahead and grab some Plasti Gauge for whatever you're working on. <clears throat> so what we've got here is we went ahead and we took, I'll turn it this way. So we took the Plasti Gauge and we cut it to fit. Um, no need to waste it because this stuff, you know, you, you will be using quite a bit of it. So four thousandths is the clearance that we were looking for. We went ahead <clears throat> and this motor should have already been checked by our machinist, but we always double check our work. And what you can see down here is that we have crushed plastic gauge. So that's actually a pretty good indicator. You lay it, try to lay it straight across the crank journal there. Um, I do have one that must have shifted as we were setting the main bearing cap down, and it's a little bit womper job, but you can still get the idea. So we go in here, and I'm blocking our light there, but so we go in there, and you can see that is just a little more than four thousandths that we've got there. So that's probably three. I don't know, 3.9, something like that. It's a little bigger than four when you look down, straight down at it. Um, it's definitely uh, within our, our range of clearances. They all clearanced out at about that same area. It's right about four thousandths, um, which is what we wanted to see. Now, one thing that I do want to note, in case you're going along here, this is the number six um, main bearing cap. So I'm going to go ahead and drop... 
number four back down on there so we don't get any extra dirt in it. Grab the bolt that I dropped and then come back with you over here to number six. So number six is loose and to get them loose, you grab, you know, you take the two bolts and you wiggle and pull up and they're going to be pretty hard to get out of there. Ah, see, that's a pretty good one right there. That's on point for being about four thousandths as well. But what I wanted to show you is look at the different shape of that bearing. When you get your bearing kit, if you're rebuilding this, you're going to have a some kind of a load bearing, a thrust bearing that's going to come in here. And not only will it have the normal um, bearing like this, but it's also, it's going to have a collar on it. And that takes the in and out play, the forces that would normally be on this crankshaft moving back and forth. Um, I thought that might be handy for somebody out there, you know, if you haven't messed with one of these, that's probably something you get that bearing. You say, Ooh, where the crap does that go? Um, there will be a machined spot on number six. It's the only spot it can fit. Okay, so that's what we've done. And then we go through and we check each one of these guys all the way down the line, check the clearances, and then we can know that we don't have a bearing that's going to seize up on us because there are definitely those stories. I've, I've had it happen personally. You go to the parts store, you get a kit in, and you know everything should be right. In a perfect world, it would be right. So you throw your motor together, and then all of a sudden, you've got a bearing that spins, and you've got a spun bearing in your motor. So take the time. It kind of sucks, because it takes extra time, because then we'll pull these all out. We'll clean everything up. We use either our fingernail to remove the plastic gauge or something soft like a plastic credit card. You do not use anything metal to pull the plastic gauge off. So we'll go through there. We'll clean these all up. We'll re-clean the bearings and everything just in case. Uh, I think on one of these I saw a little speck of dirt that had gotten in there. So we'll make sure that we re-clean them up. We'll be extra vigilant. We'll put ARP assembly lube. We like the ARP Ultra Sick Slick assembly lube. Um, and I'll, I'll, again, I'll show you that process as we go through. And then we'll clamp these down and bolt them down for reals um, when we get there. All right, so now you're up to speed. I'll catch you on the next go-round.